This tutorial will demonstrate how to carry out a basic plaster face cast that you can use to sculpt prosthetic designs onto. This is a crucial stage when making prosthetics as it ensures an accurate fit when applying your pieces, which is something that we all want. This was actually my second face cast, as the first one turned out to be a bit of a dud, it was unusable and my OCD tendencies were telling me to get rid of it. This was due to the alginate setting too quickly during the application, which left me with a cast that was not true to our model's face and it looked like he's seen better days. The list of things that you need is fairly short. You will just need alginate, gypsona plaster bandages, plaster of Paris to fill the cast afterwards, disposable buckets of bowls that you don't care about, spatulas, Vaseline, cling film and tape or a bowl cap. In more professional circumstances you would apply a bowl cap to your model because it achieves a more accurate result. However, both myself and my model were very busy bees at the time so I just applied cling film and tape for quickness. Then as a form of release we applied Vaseline to any exposed hair on the face such as eyebrows and eyelashes. This just ensures that the alginate doesn't rip any out when the life cast gets removed. I'm being a bit dramatic but you get the idea. Here you can just see us continuing to apply Vaseline to any hair on the face. Now we're ready to apply the alginate and you can see here that it's a very thick consistency and it should be mixed with a 1 to 1 ratio of alginate to water. Please do not attempt to live cast by yourself as this could be quite scary for the model. As you can see here I've got two people helping me, one person to help me apply the alginate and the other to keep the nostrils clear. Once the alginate is set it takes on a rubber consistency and I forgot to mention before but if you apply Nivea cream to your hands beforehand it makes the alginate peel straight off. When applying the plaster bandage you want to build up a thick layer around the outside of the face as this creates a strong frame for your cast and prevents your cast from warping which trust me has happened to me more times than I'd care to admit. Warping is what happens when the plaster manages to seep through in between the alginate and the plaster jacket which can make your final cast look very weird. But by building out a strong layer around the outside of the cast will prevent this from happening. Continue to apply the plaster bandage in a variety of thicknesses and widths until you are happy with the thickness of your overall plaster jacket. So we're nearly there, yay! <laughs> All you have to do now is wait for the plaster to dry properly and if you flick the outside of the cast and annoy your model underneath, uh, you just want to hear a hollow sound and this means it's ready to peel off. Now you can just see me here begin to release the edges by running my finger all the way around and at this stage I realised that we forgot to Vaseline some exposed hair on the top of the head. <gasps> Sorry Will. This meant that it lost quite a few hairs in the removal process. Obviously don't copy me and avoid doing this yourselves but Will's a happy little trooper and never complains about anything. Once the life cast has been removed you can apply a layer of plaster bandage over the nostrils so that the plaster doesn't leak out all over the place when filling your cast. And if all goes to plan, which never happens to me, hence the two face cast attempts, you now know a cheap, effective way of casting that can easily be achieved. Now you can go off and be creative little bunnies and sculpt whatever you want, with the reassurance that your prosthetics will completely conform to your model's face. So thanks very much for watching, hopefully I didn't make too much of a tale of myself making my first video. Uh, I'll put all the links as to where you can buy all of the materials used in the description box below. Bye!